sometimes they do, but uh, you know, Marvin has always been um, a cool customer. You know, he's dealt with the ups and the downs, I think, pretty well. Uh, he's a very level-headed guy. Uh, but it does. I mean, like you said, when, when people start talking like they're like, well, you know, he's, he's been solid, he's a good rider. But you don't want to be a good rider to be signed on a team as like a good backup. You know, you want to be the guy. You want to be the guy that wins. And uh, we heard earlier in one of Marvin's interviews, he just said, I came to America to be a champ. And until I do that, I'm, I'm not going to be satisfied. I've won races. I love it being here. But the ultimate goal was to be a champ. And, uh, you know, for a lot of guys, that's their dream. That's what they fight for. I can relate. Um, but... No one cares about your dreams, you know. They <laughs> yeah, say, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Osborne was saying, yeah, well, you know what? I grew up in Virginia, so I also know about dreams. Yeah, he wants to win an AMIC championship. He did it in the 250 class two years ago, but he has now shown that he can handle the big 450 as well. Zach Osborne on the final lap. This will be a big milestone for him. His first ever win on a 450. A lap away from it. And just looking further back, Webb, you know, Webb's about 10 seconds back of Tomac. And then Anderson about 20 seconds behind Webb. So that early race takes it all through it yeah. down big time. Big throw down at the beginning last, but this track's so brutal. Ended up being a survival race here down the stretch. Yeah, you can see at the moment the lap time has dropped off. No one's really pushing. In fact, the fastest guy on track that lap around was Cooper Webb. So he's having a stronger finish to his motos. So for him, he'll go look at the positives from that. Osborne's going to look at the positives, which was, I want a motor. I want yeah. a motor in the 40 plus. I vote. Hello. Well, he's he's got a going to now crash here for the flat slap to I, get it. He just wanted this close up for his oh, first okay. motor win. Here the camera. Yeah. I just want to comment. You saw Zach revving the edge. He was trying to bore the lap riders that he's coming. He's done it. 10 second gap over Moosecat, and he started right next to him. So he has proven now he can handle the early laps, the mid race low. We've always known that he's going to be strong in the end. He is as determined as they come. A little further back here. Uh, behind Webb is Anderson and Barsha six, Norin, Sabachi, Roxon at night. John Short, great job of the privateer out of Texas in 10. Mercurio, Karen Bogle, Cody Shop, and Tristan Lane round out the top 15. Osborne, we're the inch a little more, telling the lap riders, get out of the way, I'm trying to win this one. Oh, getting a little close. Yeah, nice work there. Uh, you know, it, it is tough sometimes for the lappers, on, especially in tracks like this, where there is only one or two lines and they kind of funnel together. Uh, and, and there again, that's why you hear Osborne breaking the engine. It's more like. It's not a honk of the horn, it's more like, hey, I'm a, you saw that blue flag a little bit ago, I am that guy coming up, hook me up, you know, get out of the main line. Only a few turns left for Zach Osborne, who has proven to be a player now, moving up to the 450 class this year. And we've told this story many times, had to spend a few years in Europe to rebuild his racing hopes. After all the options in the U.S. have fizzled, where he had a whole bunch of bad results, bad luck, injuries. Pretty much anything to go wrong did when he first turned pro. But all that has done has built a ridiculous level of determination, and that's probably why it's no surprise on one of the roughest tracks of the year. Late in the game, he pulled away. Zach Osborne has his first ever 450 moto win. But for the second week in a row, Red Bull KTM's Marvin Muscat is going to be the overall winner. Moosecan takes Southwick. Two years in a row at this racetrack also, and he was the fastest rider in qualifying, so he has definitely figured out the sandbox here in Massachusetts. And Alex, uh, Thanks for believing in me. It was a rough, uh, you know, start of the season, but, uh, you know, it's all mentally when you're not, not on the podium, but uh, they still have it. <laughs> Congratulations, Marv, on back-to-back -back overall wins. And what was fascinating there is with everything he's got going on that day, we're still able to keep an eye on the maps there. To look us all for a run across on what a day of racing it's been here in Southwick. Taking his first career 450 moto win, Zach Osborne. Sir, Zach, congratulations. You just told me you were the most tired you think you've ever been, even more so than last week when we saw those high temperatures. How good does it feel to get this done and knowing that you got it done at a track like this on a day like this? 
Yeah, it's awesome to, to get a win and get it out of the way on a gnarly track. I mean, I was close last weekend, but I didn't have anything left at the end. And today, the same, you know, if there had been a huge attack at the end, I'm not sure that I could have withstood it. But I was able to really attack my first three laps today, which is uh, what I've been struggling with. So I'm really happy with my progress from my practices and uh, and make some good headway there in the beginning. So I didn't have to waste so much uh, energy getting around guys. So I have to give it up to um, my trainer, Alvin Baker, and everyone around me that puts in so much work to, to get me here. Um, hopefully we have an extra day off this week so I can get recovered again. Um, but I have to give it up to Rockstar and Recall Spartan Factory Racing. Um, the good Lord for keeping me safe. Uh, <sighs> there's so many people that, that, that it takes to get me here and I am tired and I don't know uh, to name them all. So thank you, you know who you are. And um, I'm so grateful to be here. You just told me that you were aware that the overall was on the line there. Um, it was easy to tease to know that you nearly had that not a tease. I mean, it was a, a huge day for me. You know, uh, I scored uh, 40, or 40, 45 points, and uh, that's my best so far. So uh, my starts were on point, and like I said, I improved on those first three laps. You know, you have to walk before you can run. So to, to take the moto win off the box and uh, and make, get on the podium again is a really good step for me. Congratulations, Zach. Thanks, Will. Let's show you how he did it with our Lucas. So I get the whole shot, but it was a huge battle early to he, Cooper Webb, and Muscat. Yeah, it was, and then that little mistake there from Webb coming out of that corner, and Osborne had that inside, took the lead, and then uh, you see Rocks are just really strong at the beginning part of the race, gets around Webb, but unfortunately for the 94, it will go south from there. Yeah, he would move up, Rocks and Wood, and then he'd go backwards and end up finishing this one in 10th. He's obviously struggling with something. Here's Webb getting him back. Then Eli Tomek starts to catch fire. He started this race ninth. He gets around Roxon. He gets around Webb. He started to close on Muscan. Couldn't get him. And that allowed Muscan to hold on for the weekends. Overall, there's Osborne taking the moto win. Muscan finishes second. He won the first moto earlier. One, two scores. Give him the overall. That's the ninth overall win of Muscan's career in 